Welcome to Simpler Bible, a daily journey to biblical understanding. Hosea part one, we're only going to cover, look, Hosea is uh, 13, 14 chapters long. We're not going to cover all of it. Well, we're going to get through chapter 13, but not all of it. All right. And so Hosea part one, today we're going to get through chapters one through three. Really key things here. Thankfully, Hosea tells us when he was a prophet, and it begins this way, the word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. And so uh, he was prophet for a lot of kings, but he doesn't have a lot to say. So his words were kind of spread out in, the, in these days, all right? So when the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, go and take for yourself a wife of Hordom and have children of Hordom. So go and take an unfaithful wife. Some people have said that that meant go and take a prostitute. Maybe definitely go and take an unfaithful wife. That's definitely what's being conveyed here. Go and take a wife who's going to cheat on you. And it says, and then you will have children of Hordom, children that aren't yours because she's committing adultery with these other men. For the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said, Call his name Jezreel, for in just a little while I will punish the household of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. So you might not remember this story, but when Jehu was king and he brought... Uh, he kind of brought victory against Ahab's household. One of the things that he did is he sent a message um, to, he killed all the people in Jezreel and he sent messages to the people saying, hey, look, take the sons of Ahab and put them on the throne. And so like Jehu was doing some stuff that he was supposed to be doing. He's decimating the house of Ahab. He's bringing it to an end. But Jehu kind of got, went a little overboard. And, and so God says, call his name Jezreel, and I'm going to bring judgment on the people for the sin of Jehu and put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So she, that's, that's this wife, Gomer, she conceived again and bore a daughter. And the Lord said, call her name No Mercy, for I will have no more mercy on the house of Israel, and I will not forgive them at all. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah. I will save them by the Lord of their God, I will not save them by bow or sword or by war or horses or horsemen. So think of Hezekiah there. Think of the 185,000 soldiers that were put to death in the Assyrian army. When she weaned no mercy, she conceived and bore a son. And the Lord said, call his name, not my people, for you are not my people and I am not your God. So one of the things to consider here is that as as Hosea is holding his new son, his third child, which none of these are his children, it doesn't seem so far, or at least the first two have terrible names. He's holding this third child and God says, name him, not my kid. And Hosea is like, dang it, honey, <laughs> like you stepped out again. You've been unfaithful again. And he says of Israel, you're not my people anymore and I'm not your God. And he says, the number of the children of Israel will be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, you are my people, it shall also be said to it shall be said to them, children of the living, sorry, in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, it will be said to them, children of the living God. And the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and they will appoint for themselves one head and they will go up from the land and that will, and great will be the day of Jezreel. So he's saying here that you're not my people anymore. I'm not your God anymore. But then he promises in the, them that there will be a day that their numbers will be as the sands on the seashore and that they will be blessed and they will come together under one head again. That's going to be in the future. Uh, this idea of as many as the sand on the seashore mentioned in Romans 9, but not the same context. I do find the language interesting. Hosea 2 says, say to your brother, you are my people and to your sister, you have received mercy. So the third son was called, you're not my people. The sister, the second one was called, I will show you no mercy. And God's saying, but now I will show you mercy. Now I will call you my people. Plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife and I am not her husband. Plead that she put away her whoring from her face, her adultery from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and make her as in the day she was born and make her like a wilderness and make her like a parched land and kill her with thirst. So this kind of sounds a little bit like um, Ezekiel 16, when God says of the nation of Israel, he goes, I found you abandoned in the field. I grew you up. You became a beautiful young woman. I betrothed myself to you. You became my wife, but then you became a whore and you committed adultery with all these other lovers. 
He says this, Upon her children I will have no mercy, because they are children of whoredom. For their mother has played the whore. She who conceived them has acted shamefully. For she's, keep in mind, this whole time he's talking about the nation of Israel. Yes, Hosea married uh, a, a woman named Gomer. Yes, this is, this is part of this prophecy here. But what he's really talking about is he's really talking about the nation of Israel and their unfaithfulness to God and turning to these other gods. He says, for their mother has played the whore. Israel has played the whore. She who conceived them has acted shamefully. She said, I will chase after my lovers. I will give my, who give me my bread and, uh, and my drink, my wool and my flax, my oil and my water. Therefore, I will hedge up her way with thorns and I will build a wall against her so that she cannot find her path. So God is saying, I'm going to physically prevent you from chasing after these other gods. She shall pursue her other lovers, but never be able to overtake them. She shall seek them, but not be able to find them. And she will say, I will return to my husband, for at least it was better for me then than now. So God is saying, I'm going to keep Israel from pursuing the other gods. Eventually, they're going to give up pursuing the other gods. And they're going to say, look, it's time for me to return to God. She did not know that it was I who gave her the grain, the wine, the oil, who lavished on her silver and gold, which they used for the Baal. So in other words, Israel got to the point where they weren't trusting God for their provision. They were trusting their idols for provision. And God's going, she had no idea that I was the one who was providing for her. I was the one who was taking care of her. Therefore, I will take back my grain in its time, my wine in its season. I will take away my wool and my flax, which were to cover her nakedness. And now I, un I will uncover her lewdness, her sinfulness in the sight of her lovers. And no one will rescue her out of my hand. I will put an end to all of her mirth, her joy, her feasts, her new moons, her Sabbaths all of her appointed feast. I will lay waste to her vines and her fig trees. We've seen that recently in one of the prophets of which she said, these are my wages, which my lovers have given me. I will make them a forest and the beasts of the field will devour them. I will punish her for her feast days of the Baals, the false gods she served when she burned offerings to them and adorned herself with her ring and jewelry. And she went after other lovers and forgot me, declares the Lord. Therefore behold, so I, I need you to get this. This is one of the most beautiful things I think in, in, the, in the book of, of Hosea. They've rejected me. They've turned to other gods. They have forgotten that I provided for them. God says, I, uh, I betrothed them to me as a, as a husband, but they've rejected me. They've turned to other lovers. They've turned to other gods. They don't give me any credit for my provision for them. They don't have any love for me. They're, they're offering their children to sacrifices. They've turned to all this wickedness. So I'm going to stop her from chasing after her other lovers. And then this is what I'm going to do to her. And you're thinking, here comes the heavy hand of God. Here comes his judgment. And listen to what he says. Therefore, here's what I'm going to do to her. Verse 14. I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. I will speak softly to her. And there I will give her the vineyards to make the valley of Achor a door of hope. And she shall answer me as in the days of her youth, as at that time when she came out of the land of Egypt, when she was a young nation. Remember, it's still about the nation of Israel. And in that day, declares the Lord God, you will call me my husband and no longer call me my master. So he says, here's how I'm going to respond to her being so wicked. I'm going to speak tenderly to her. I'm going to speak kindly to her. I'm going to win her back to me so that she will have hope again, so that she'll be restored in her youth like when I first brought her out of Egypt. For I will remove the names of the Baals from her mouth. They will be remembered by name no more. I will make for them a covenant on that day with the beasts of the field, the birds of the heaven, and the creeping things of the ground. I will abolish the bow and the sword and the war from the land, and I will make you to lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me. That's like an engagement, but it's more serious in the Jewish culture than it is in our culture. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice and in steadfast love and mercy. Righteousness, justice, love, mercy. Man, does that sound like salvation? Beautiful, right? I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you will know the Lord. In that day, I will answer, declares the Lord. I will answer the heavens. Um, and notice, in that day. And they will answer the earth, and the earth will answer the grain, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall answer Jezreel. And I will sow for her and I will sow her for myself in the land, and I will have mercy on no mercy, and I will say to the people who are not my people, you are now my people, and they will say, and you are our God. And the Lord said to me, now he's speaking back to Hosea, so go again and love a woman who is loved by another man. Remember, this is a picture of Israel. Go and love a woman who is loved by another, another man who is an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love the cakes of raisins. So I bought my wife back for 15 shekels of silver and a homer of barley. And I said to her, you will dwell as mine for many days. You shall not play the whore. You shall not belong to another man. And I will treat you the same way. 
For the children of Israel shall dwell many days without a king or a prince, without sacrifice or pillar, without household gods. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and they shall come in the fear of the Lord to his goodness in the latter days. There's several clues here you need to see. So Hosea goes and he brings back Gomer to himself. And it, then it says this, For the children of Israel will dwell many days without a king, without a prince, without sacrifice, without pillar, without household gods, without ephods, and then they will eventually return to seek the Lord, and, and, and God will be their king, David will be their king, and they will come in the fear of the Lord, and they will be joined back to his goodness in the latter days. And so this is about the time when, when God restores Israel and brings them back to himself in love and grace and peace. And so uh, there are immediate implications in the days of Hosea, but there's also future implications in the first coming of the Lord and in the second coming, uh, the return of Christ. And so those are the first three chapters of Hosea. Look, we've got a lot to go to, through tomorrow. We're going to go through chapters 5, 6, 7, 11, and 13. 5, 6, 7, 11, and 13 tomorrow in Hosea. Join us then as we finish up this intriguing book. Bye. Thank you so much for journeying with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos, you can find our podcast, you can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.